because he's going to be my guest today. But Demetrius Andrade has had a very hard time getting fights. One of the reasons he's avoided people like Canelo say he hasn't fought anyone and he has a boring style. Well, one of the reasons maybe he hasn't fought anyone is because his style is technical and he's not a, you know, ferocious knockout puncher. And so both those reasons are used as excuses to avoid him. Go fight somebody. How can you get someone to fight him if they're all going to use the excuse that he's too technical to fight? Someone's going to have to fight, step up and fight Andrade. I think if Andrade really wants the Canelo fight, you go up to super middle, you beat a credible guy there, and you start really campaigning on the merits. I understand why he crashed that press conference, though. You got to drum up interest somehow, and Andrade is being avoided. By the way, Canelo would be favored to win that fight. Not that anyone thinks Canelo's going to lose. We just like to see him in fights that there's a good chance at least he can lose. At least the other guy has real chances. And maybe not chances the way Billy Joe Saunders um, and, and Callum Smith and, yeah, maybe Caleb Plant. Next headline. Josh Taylor, Jose Ramirez unification is one week away. All four belts, speaking of unifications, at 140 pounds at Junior Welter are on the line. This fight is on ESPN. And people, boxing fans, that is a fight that both fighters have real chances. And that is a fight where neither one has a technical style. These two come to go to war. This is a terrific matchup to unify. Sorry, not just to unify, but to create an undisputed Junior welterweight champion. This has flown under the radar for too long. We're going to have a special one-hour Max on Boxing next week to, to preview everything. The opposition, boy, that's a heavyweight champion that's hard to beat. On the other hand, Anthony Joshua may be a tad underrated here. He has the deepest resume of any heavyweight in boxing. He's a big, strong guy. He has an Olympic gold medal. He has climbed off the deck even when he lost his title. He got up off the deck and came back to beat the guy who beat him. Joshua, I think, is a live dog, believe me. The orbital bone, fractures in four different places, and look, now he's one title short of being undisputed, and he can accomplish that goal against Caleb Plant, Max. Yeah, and we'll get to Plant in a second. One thing I noticed about um, Canelo, and I know you and many others, have him number one pound for pound, and for good reason. If you base it on resume, you could do that, and he is a great fighter in his prime. I've noticed that he, early in his career, was not comfortable being the aggressor, really. He's, a, he's really a natural counterpuncher, but he is a complete fighter now. He can, go, he can go hunt you down, cut off the ring, do whatever. But he's consistently fighting. Like, if I had to make a list of the top five guys I'd want to see him face, he's fighting, like, the fourth or fifth guy on the list. Good for him. I'm happy with the fight, but he's not fighting better Biev, Bivol, a Charlo brother. I'll take either one, but let's say Jamal, right? Triple G in a rubber match. What about his opposition now? And I understand these are belt holders at super middleweight, but are any of these guys one of the top, say, three guys you'd like to see him fight? I mean, the fights I want to see most are Jamal Charlo and David Benavidez. I think those two guys give Canelo the toughest fights stylistically. They're big guys even though Charlo's at 160 right now. But look, Max, boxing and the industry, they insist on this nonsense with the titles, so you can't blame Canelo for trying to grab all of them. Yeah, and by word, Andrade. And by the way, I'm not saying any of those guys, maybe Canelo beats all those guys. Like, those, but, but some of the guys I mentioned are like 50-50 type fights instead of 80-20 type fights. After the fight, Canelo said, you mentioned he wanted to fight Caleb Plant, and Caleb Plant does have the remaining belt, right? How likely does, does that happen next? How, what's the likelihood? Max, I think it's very likely. I actually spoke to Caleb Plant earlier this week. He said it's the fight he badly wants. And obviously, he's with PBC, Fox, and Showtime. I believe his last four fights were with Fox. Um, I think we're going to see what happens with the deal because Canelo's been fighting with Eddie Hearn. That deal is now expired. But he obviously loves working with Matchroom. Like you mentioned, more than 70,000 big WrestleMania-style entrances. And I think the only question now is, is it going to be on Fox pay-per-view or the zone? Right. And Canelo, that was a shrewd move. He became a free agent at a time where he is the number one draw in boxing. I mean, he or Anthony Joshua, though he's considered the better fighter, um, you know, in a pound for pound sense. 
And how much does that kind of flexibility, on the one hand, enable him to create any event he wants, and on the other hand, put more of an onus on him to bring the fans the fights they really want to see him in? Because it appears that networks and promoters aren't an excuse. You're right, Max, because besides being the biggest star in boxing, which gives you the kind of muscle and clout you need to kind of cut through the politics in the sport, he's also a network free agent. And look, he's going to fight Caleb Plant probably September 18th, maybe Allegiant Stadium in Las Vegas, the home of the Raiders. After that, I hope we're going to see Charlo and Benavidez. And call me crazy, I still want to see that rubber match with Gennady Golovkin. And I say rubber match because a lot of people thought Triple G beat him in the first fight. It was a draw. Canelo won the second fight. That's still got to be the biggest commercial bout for Canelo. Yeah, I would advise Triple G to finally go to the body a little bit. Mexican style, go to the body. Um, you were there when Demetrius Andrade crashed the post-fight press conference. Um, what was that scene like? <laughs> that was a crazy scene. And I think that was one of the best things to ever happen in Canelo's career because he finally showed his big personality, speaking fluent English, cursing a lot. I've seen people joke that he sounded like Tony Montana from Scarface. I mean, this guy let the F-bombs flow, but that's what makes you big, right? That's what made Floyd Mayweather big, Tyson Fury, being a big personality, talking trash, and Canelo can obviously do it with the best of them. And you shot that footage yourself, what, on your phone or something, Mike? I shot it on the iPhone, Max, 4K, but when you post it to Twitter, it kind of buffers it a little bit, but... Look, that was great for Canelo. We need more of so, that. Wait, so I want to get this straight. So there's Mike Coppinger of The Athletic in the press conference. He, you see Andrade's crashing the press conference. You're like, oh, I got to get this. And it's not like the old days where the news guy could say, oh, I got to get a camera crew. You just take out your iPhone and get it. I just threw the iPhone out there, tried to pan back and forth. And my favorite part, I think, was when Demetrius Andrade said, don't talk to my father that way. And then Canelo just still said, get out of here. Uh, obviously, I'm paraphrasing. Can't curse on ESPN2, Max. No. But I thought it was great. So, Andre crashes the press conference. It reminds me of something. Roy Jones went up to heavyweight at one point. He beats John Ruiz for a belt. At that moment, I thought we might be looking at the greatest fighter of all time. He may replace Sugar Ray Robinson. There were fights lined up with Mike Tyson and Evander Holyfield. And then Antonio Tarver crashed his press conference. And it so ticked off Roy that he melted 25 pounds of lean muscle off, fought Tarver, lost, which was shocking, and was never the same again, right? What are the odds that a guy like Andrade can get under Canelo's skin to the point where Canelo fights him? I don't think the chances are that great. I mean, I remember when I was in Canelo's gym in San Diego last year, and I said, hey, are you ever going to fight Andrade? And he said to me in English, no, he's boring. And if I fight him, the fight's going to be boring, and they'll blame me. Whether you think that's an excuse or not is another story. But Canelo strikes me as the type of guy that would rather you respect him and say, hey, I would love to have the fight, than disrespect him. I think he might try to punish Andrade now by not getting in the fight. Yeah, I don't think he was going to. I mean, Canelo has shown the willingness to fight everybody. Um, there is a business side to this, and Andrade is trying to make himself more attractive for, you know, from a business side to these guys so we can get some big fights. It may not work. Nothing may work. Um, you talked with Tyson Fury while in Dallas, right? What did you learn about the Fury-Joshua fight, Mike? I mean, the fight remains close, you know, August 14th, probably in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, with another purpose-built stadium, just like we had for Ruiz Joshua too. I asked Tyson Fury, is the fight going to get done? And... I, I said, look, you're probably not going to think the fight is done until you have a signed contract. He said, no, no, no. I'm not going to think the fight is done until I'm in the ring. Speaking of uh, interesting scenes, you were part of the, because uh, we were talking about Andre crashing the press conference, you were part of the Jake Paul Ben Askren broadcast. I've had Jake Paul here on Max Unboxing. I had Logan Paul on the Max Kellerman show on ESPN radio. Um, I have respect for what they're doing in the sense that they're training as hard as they can and trying to be as good as they can, and they're not responsible for the shape their opponent comes in or anything like that. They're making big events. Hopefully, they're turning some people on to combat sports. But what was the scene like with, you know, with the Askren fight, and what are your impression of the Paul brothers? I mean, the, the scene was wild. Snoop Dogg walking around, uh, engaging in some adult activities, we'll say, and just mayhem. Celebrities everywhere, musicians concerts 
I, I saw people say they thought Ben Askren took a dive, which is crazy. I was on the ring apron, and Ben Askren's face definitely broke his fall. You could say he didn't train. That's another story. But any pro fighter you talk to, Lance, and I've talked to you a lot, they will all tell you Jake Paul is a lot better than people think. He's pretty good for being a 3-0 novice, and I would even argue there are you know fighters that we see on that open up the cards that Jake Paul would probably beat right now. Yeah, by the way, he has no amateur fights. Like, you know, a lot of this is muscle memory. They're by their own admission, actually, it's a funny to say it, but humble about it. They're showing humility. They know they're novices. I, I, I don't have a beef with them, really. I think, you know, and, and neither does Mike Tyson or Oscar De La Hoya, according to Jake Paul, or Jamal Charlo from his public pr proclamations. Since we're talking celebrity boxing, we have uh, Logan Paul against Floyd Mayweather in a few weeks, and... I love what Floyd is saying here because it is exactly the obvious analysis, right? If you're looking at it, you think, well, here's what P Floyd must be thinking. And then he went ahead and said it. Listen to Floyd. No money is worth my own. Okay. No it. amount of money. But I'm still, a, I'm, I'm still a smart businessman. Now, we talk about a Logan Paul, a YouTuber, for 100 mil? Give me that. Makes perfect sense, Mike. He, he's just said he's 44 years old. He does not have any more professional fights, really. No money is worth his O. He's very proud of being 50 and O, right? On the other hand, why would he possibly ever turn down $100 million to box an exhibition against a novice with almost no experience? It makes sense. What's your impression of Floyd right now? I mean, who can really blame him? Like, who of us would not take $100 million or even a fraction of that to engage in an event where there's no harm in it? This is not a sanctioned fight. It does not hurt his O. And it's, a, it's more like WWE, in my opinion. Nothing wrong with that. All sports are entertainment anyway. If Floyd can make the easy money after having one of the greatest boxing careers of all time, kudos to him. Yeah, it's amazing that he spent most of his career having to cat once he, once he got to really do his own thing carry the promotion, right? He had to be the guy drumming up interest. And then it made, you know, take all the money he made up till he fought Oscar De La Hoya. And he makes more money for an exhibition now against these kind of guys than he did till that point in his career. And it's because the other guy's carrying half the promotion. He must be thinking, finally, I get to make an event with, where I'm not carrying the whole promotion. Mike Coppinger, always a pleasure to hear from you. Any, any parting thoughts? you have anything else I haven't drilled down and gotten to? You have a little something you were going to reveal on The Athletic or somewhere else, but I can steal for free here? <laughs> Nothing right now, Max, but subscribe to The Athletic, and I'll show it to you there. Thanks, Mike, for joining me today. As always, you can read Mike, as he just told you, at The Athletic, and make sure you follow him on Twitter as well. Next, it's your turn to ask me Riverdeck. Now time for Max Me Anything. Your questions, my answers. One round. Ring that bell. Ben asks, was all in on fighters going out on their shield in my younger days? Now I only want them to acquit themselves well and not be permanently injured, win or lose. Canelo's punch was so hard that BJ Saunders' iPhone probably won't unlock for him. That's a good line. I'm for the stoppage, but want your two cents. I know what you mean. The North American, especially boxing culture, thinks that you should be willing to die to win an athletic competition. And I think in the UFC, it's actually more civilized, right? You can lose and win another day. And, and, in the, and maybe the European tradition in boxing is also more civilized. The history of boxing is no matter how good you are, eventually you're going to come across a guy just as good, at least on that night, as you. And what are you willing to do to be great? Muhammad Ali, Joe Frazier, their first fight, Manila. Ali said it's the closest he ever came to death. And Ali had real health problems after his career. Was it worth it? Was it worth it for Ali to sacrifice his health on the altar of his greatness? That's a question that I don't think is easy to answer. Axel asks, does Plant represent any sort of challenge for Canelo with his hand speed? Or does Canelo cruise to a decision? I think Plant does represent a challenge to Canelo with his hand speed and his athletic ability and his boxing quality. But I don't know that Canelo wins that fight on points. I think Canelo has a real chance to win that fight by knockout. Canelo's a complete fighter who knows how to time fast-footed and fast, you know, fighters with fast hands and feet and athletic ability and punish them and stop them. Josh wants to know, what's next for Canelo after he inevitably beats Plant and unifies the division? That's a good question. He will be a heavy favorite 
to fight and to beat, uh, to rather to beat plan. What I have kept, what I've been saying all along, I don't think he'll fight better BF because the money's not there. I don't think he'll fight Bivol for the same reason. And I don't know that those guys beat him. Those are 50-50 kind of fights, and those are the kind of fights I want to see Canelo in. My money's on a Triple G third fight. Brian asks, is ESPN going to finally recognize Canelo as the pound for pound? I think there's a good chance that he is. I think there's a good chance he'll be recognized that way. For me, pound for pound is not about your resume. It's about at this moment, if they were all the same size, they're all in the same division, naturally, who do I think would beat the most guys? For me, that's Terrence Crawford. But I admit, the evidence does not back it up in terms of making the soundest argument. You can probably make the soundest argument for Canelo. I just don't think that's what pound for pound is about. I think pound for pound is about your imagination. Sam wants to know, Max, can we throw in the towel on this in his prime thing in boxing? In what other sport do we single out a short span of an athlete's career to justify their greatness? No one argues Jamal Lewis in his prime was one of the best to ever do it. It's ridiculous. Oh, I disagree. I think you can point to an athlete's prime. This guy in his prime was as good as anyone who ever did it. Dwight Gooden in his prime. Pedro Martinez in his prime. Two of the greatest pitchers who ever lived, but their careers probably don't match up with like Tom Seavers. No, you can do it in other sports and you can do it in boxing. Time is up, as you heard. That'll do it for Max Me Anything. Tweet me with your questions to at Max Keller and maybe yours will be answered on the show.